Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. This is part two of bringing water to a cabin or tiny house in the woods. I've got a ram pump, which is a water pump that does not need fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. So if you missed part one of this two-part series, I did a full install of the ram pump and brought the water up to an IVC tote at the top. I've had to make some modifications to my install and I want to walk you through the whole system of the ram pump and then we'll head up to the cabin or tiny house and I will show you how the system goes through uh, two different storage tanks, a diaphragm pump, a filter, a hot water or a water heater and then also uh, I've got it plumbed up into the building. So let's go ahead and walk up to the intake of the ram pump and I'll show you the full system from the top down to the bottom. I'm standing in the creek where I have the water source for the ram pump. The ram pump has to have flowing water, but also has to have water that falls or drops. This is known as head pressure. My initial install, I was about four or five feet lower than I currently am right now. So I had to bring my supply pipe up further and also had to go through a culvert pipe that was 75 feet long. And that was a nightmare to have to push the pipe through. I'll show you that in just a minute. But for now, let's take a look at the source water for this new install of the ram pump. This small pool of water is the intake water for the ram pump. If I zoom in, you can see there is a PVC pipe and it has a bunch of holes in it with window screen and then it has uh, some zip ties holding that all together. And that water goes down a half inch poly pipe and you can see that right here. And it makes its way on down this way and heads down about 350 feet uh, through this pipe. And it has a drop of somewhere around five and a half or six feet total uh, to a, a bucket, which I'll get to in just a moment. But I wanted to show you, it was quite a nightmare to travel down this 75 foot of culvert pipe. I got it down to the last 20 feet and then had to climb in and the bottom of that culvert is all rusted out. So it was, it was scary, but I got it done. So let's head down there real quick and I'll show you the uh, rest of the pipe. This is the other side of the culvert that the black pipe comes through. And that's the side that I had to climb into. It was quite fun because that water right there is about three and a half to four foot deep. So I had to skirt my way around and then find my way into that. Anyway, it was quite the adventure. All right, so this was the original intake for the ram pump, but now I have gone from poly pipe, which goes in there, and it converts over to PVC pipe right here and travels down another 150 feet approximately. So what we're gonna do is follow this pipe down until the next stage, which will be a filter bucket that acts as a stand pipe. Now on the previous install, I had a stand pipe right here, and it was simply a PVC pipe that stood up to match the source water. And what that did was essentially allow the pipe that's above that stand pipe to be called a supply line, and it does not have the pressure wave of the ram pump. The stand pipe is where the pressure wave would cycle. However, my line was too long, and I kept having air bubbles get trapped. And also, the longer your pipe is, the uh, more issue you have with the pressure wave dissipating as it travels. So basically, I had to remove the stand pipe and then just connect more pipe going down the hill. So uh, there is no longer a stand pipe right here. I have remedied that issue with something else a little bit further down. Now you'll notice that I go back to poly pipe right here, and it's okay. Because I am not actually working with a drive pipe, but just a supply pipe, I don't mind if it goes back and forth from uh, poly and PVC like it does right there. So notice how my pipe goes out of the creek right here and goes up over here. What I'm doing is eliminating the stand pipe 
by placing a filter bucket in place. So uh, right over here is a filter bucket. Now I'm going to go around these trees real quick so we can get a closer look at what's going on over there. The water travels down that poly pipe and goes into the top of a five gallon bucket. That right there is considered a stand pipe, but it's even uh, also working as a silt catchment. So if I were to look in there, I would see that it's got water and it's overflowing. But over here on this side, there is actually a midway pipe that is allowing water to go down to the ram pump. And that is considered the drive pipe. So the uh, PVC pipe you see right here is coming out of the midway point on the bucket. <laughs> see if I can find a good angle of that. Right in there. And it's also important to note that there is overflow coming out from the top of the bucket. And you can kind of see the water flowing in right there. So from there, the drive pipe is coming down. It's a rigid PVC, and that is important to maintain the pressure wave. And if I move down here to the pump itself, I've got it all locked down uh, under some rocks. Now it has been doing this right here for over a month, just cycling away. Uh, that's about once a second, I would say. Um, so what's happening is water is coming down this drive pipe that we just saw, and it is forcibly closing this waste valve. When that waste valve slams closed, it sends a pressure wave very fast back up the pipe, and then it also sends water into a secondary valve builds pressure in this pressure tank, and then sends water uphill. The moment that that closes and dissipates the pressure wave, the valve hangs open again and is ready to cycle once more. So it will sit there and cycle like that as long as there is water coming to the pump. Now from the pump, there is a delivery pipe which goes uphill. So that is full of water and it goes all the way up to where that telephone pole is up there. And I will show you that in the next stage of our ram pump journey here. Uh, but just know that it's about 120 feet of poly pipe, which goes up here and uh, up the hill that way. This is a 275 gallon IBC tote. The ram pump down in the creek brings water up to this tote and has a few different things going on that I wanna show you real quick. The black poly pipe that you see right here is coming up from the creek. It's got a climb of about 35 feet. It goes into the top of the IBC tote, as you can see right here. I simply just drilled a hole into the top of the cap and placed that pipe down in there. Now it only has about a quarter gallon a minute coming in, so not a lot of water. However, if you look at the overflow pipe right here, that's the water that is coming into this all the time, 24 seven. So it is actually filling up this thing uh, pretty quick, about a day and a half and it is totally full. So uh, what I've got going on is water pours into the top and then down here, I've got an IBC to two inch adapter, which goes into a two inch fern co fitting, which goes onto a bushing that cuts it down to three quarter inch. I've got the pipe which comes up and it's cut off so that the water will overflow at that point right there. That's important for what I'm gonna show you next here. Um, from there, I've got a union so I can disconnect stuff. Uh, here is a drain valve, uh, also has garden hose connector on it for using that downhill. And then a ball valve, which goes into a poly pipe, which I have buried underground here. So let's move on to the next step, which is bringing the water to this tiny house. I built a small room onto the side of the tiny house, which I'm calling the water shed. And this is where the water goes underground from my IBC tote into a 55 gallon drum. And this will have insulation in here so I can disconnect the outdoor unit and have 55 gallons inside and even put a small heater in here to have a little bit of water in the winter time. Now, as I show you all of this, keep in mind that I am not really a plumber. This is the first time I've worked with PEX actually. So uh, what we have is the water coming in from right down here. It goes up, over, and into this tank. Now, you won't be able to see it from here, but the water level is about right here. 
So I have this tank leveled out to be equal with that one over there. And so that stand pipe that I have, or overflow pipe, keeps the water from ever going above right here. If for some reason it ever does, it will get caught into this uh, water heater pan and be sent outside over here. So works out pretty good. Now I realize I have to add one more cutoff valve and union on this side so I can isolate the inside water from the outside water later on. The water goes up to a 12 volt diaphragm pump and that pump will pressurize the water from whatever's in this barrel to about 45 to 50 PSI. From there, the water is sent up into a water filter. So it just takes out the sediment and silt. It's still creek water, so I would not consume this unless you have a really good filter. So from there, it's got kind of a mess of plumbing because the outdoor shower and uh, water down here was an afterthought. And so I've made some adjustments to my original. Um, but however, so one water line goes out here to this mixer valve for the outdoor shower and the other goes to the indoor side. And lastly, one of these goes to the hot water. So the hot water is the Thermomate. It's an 11,000 watt hot water. And it's got the uh, red coming out, which then goes over here to this mixer valve for the outdoor, or goes inside, as you can see right over here, for the indoor stuff. Uh, I have a separate video on this uh, if you wanna watch that. So that's what the outside looks like. Let me show you how things are. Now, notice there is no pressure tank in here. So my diaphragm pump is going to pulse a little bit when I turn the water on. I have water here on the outside of the watershed. So if I want to turn on the shower, I've got that. I can also turn on my outdoor water right there. And let's go ahead and step inside take this with me. Now I don't have the drain plumbed in yet. As you can see down there, I just have a bucket. So if I were to take my thermometer and read in here, we've got uh, almost 70 degrees. However, if I turn on the hot, I can wait for a moment. 80, 90, 94, 92, 97, 100. So as you can see, that hot water is very quickly starting to heat up. So nice to have. All right, so hot and cold on that. And then over here, there is a shower, which is still in the works. The mixer valve is right down there. The shower head is up here. And I don't have the drain line yet on this tub, but that will be here shortly. The half inch ram pump has been working nonstop for over a month to fill up this tank and the one in the watershed. And I have just finished getting that plumbing set up here in the past couple of days. And so my next step will be to put a gray water drainage from inside out here. And I may even do a little uh, septic tank type of system to help with uh, drainage as well. But that's for a different video. If you want to check out the hydraulic ram pump, I have links to them in the description down below. I actually make and sell four different sizes in both the kits and the pre-assembled version. So be sure to check those out. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have some questions or comments, leave those down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.